let's take a look at how we can animate our videos. Let's go ahead and get some videos from the stock media panel. And we're going to animate these videos instead of just staring at one screen the whole time. Animating your videos is a great way to show it through a new perspective. And you can also use it to keep your audience focused on one thing at a time. So I've got this video right here. It's a flower. Let's match it to media. And I just have this stable screen of this flower. And I just want things to be more interesting. So previously we learned how to transform our videos. We double clicked and we went to video and then transform to either rotate, flip our videos, scale them in or out, and finally change their position for X and Y. But now let's say you want your video to be scaled in, but then at another point you want it to maybe scale out. That's where the animation tab comes in handy. And we're going to learn how to use this animations tab. I'm gonna hit reset, get back my original settings. Let's head over to animation and we've got pretty good presets to start with. We got fade in. If I double click this, we're going to get a fade in effect and we have fade out like so, pause, like that, so it just comes in and then it goes away. You can see how easily we can animate our videos. Let's hit reset, vortex out, pretty cool presets. And this is great for presentations if you want to show different pictures. Pictures are also um, used for this. Double click, go to animation, and I can use these presets on my image. Vortex in. Then vortex out, the same things that I can use for my video. Let's bring back the video and double click on it. So preset animations, you can choose any that you want. We also have preset motions. These are different. We've got boom, double click to see it, which zooms in and then it kind of bounces back and forth until it finally stabilizes. The thing with these preset motions is that we're not getting keyframes. What are keyframes? They're basically time spans throughout your timeline where you get to animate a certain motion. When we double clicked on any of these, we got these two things down here. Let me zoom in. And these are called keyframes. These dots that you see here. Keyframes should always be two and above. They cannot be one keyframe because we are showing transition from point A to point B. Point B and A could be moved around, so I can just drag point B all the way here, keep it really short, and drag point A as well. We'll learn how to make our own keyframes in a second. I'm gonna delete these, and you gotta have at least two keyframes or else nothing is gonna happen. So I got this single keyframe and I'm just gonna delete it, select it and hit backspace. Let's go back to the presets and take a look at what else we've got. In the preset motions, when we select any of these, we're not getting keyframes. Let me double click on something else. Stretch to right. Here we are. We've got the animation, but I've got no keyframes to change the duration of this motion. But when I go to preset animation and double click on any of these, I'm getting the keyframes, which means I can stretch them inwards to make it shorter or stretch it outwards to make it longer. Let's stretch it inwards and see how fast the animation is. There we go, it was so fast we couldn't even tell. But if I stretch this out, we're going to get something really slow. We can see it's taking forever to reach point B. So whatever animation or transition you have will happen from point A to point B in this amount of time. The shorter it is, the faster it will happen. The longer it is, the slower it will happen. Now let's take a look at the customized tab. This was the preset tab. We've got some presets that you can use, again, for either images or videos like we saw earlier. 
Let's try this with turn off this video track at my photo. Let's try preset motions with our image here. Double click on any of them and you'll get something like this. But again, you're not getting the keyframes, so you can't do much with it. But with preset animations, you get keyframes that you can stretch out or shorten. I'm going to double click and reset, get back my original footage. I'll also reset the image as well. Now let's go to the video and go to the customize tab. Now over here is when you can create your own animations instead of choosing them from the preset panel. The options here are the exact same as the transform panel that we learned about over here. We've got rotate, scale, position. We don't have flip here, but instead we have opacity. And opacity is how much of that video or image is there. If it's 100, it's fully there. If I lower this, it will be gone. You can keep it around like this. Opacity is great for stacking things on top. We will learn about this later. Let's delete this keyframe that we just made. Let's say that I want my video to be full frame over here. And then I want it to zoom in around here. I'm going to hit M on my video, select it, hit M and come somewhere around here, hit M again. So I've got two markers now and I could just uh, select that marker to get there. Add a keyframe for point A. So point A, it's full frame. Select my other marker and create my point B where I will zoom into my video. Let's use what we learned. Position X and Y to adjust this flower to the center. There we go. If needed, you can rotate too, but it's all right for me. So this transition of scale and position is going to happen in between these two points. Let's go ahead and look. It's full frame, but it's slowly zooming in. And now my flower is centered. It will remain the same after point B unless I make another keyframe. Similar to the beginning of the video, until it reaches point A, nothing's changing. All the change happens in between keyframes. So let's say after point B, I want a point C. I can make that by moving forward a bit and then making another change. Let's try to zoom out. And actually, let's reset everything. So it's like we go back to where we were. Select my keyframe. Make sure the ball is blue and not white. If it's white, you're not selecting anything. Select the uh, circle to make it blue. And I'm just going to zoom out and maybe fade out the video. Hit OK. And now we can see from point B, if I play this, it's going to zoom out like we asked. And at the same time, it's going to fade out. So we have point A, B, and C. Anything in between these points are animations that will happen exactly where we uh, assigned them can make even more, add a keyframe by selecting this and just do something else. Let's bring the video back from point C to point D. This is the animation that we're getting. And if at any point I wanted to change my settings for each of these keyframes, I can either select them, like we said, to make the, uh, to select the circle, or I can go on any of them and hit this icon, which looks like a K to go to my previous keyframe. It's automatically selected. I can either delete it or I could change it. Let's hit Control Z. There we go. Go to my next keyframe, come back here. Maybe, uh, let's go to the next one actually. Maybe over here I want my video to rotate a bit like that. So now I've added a new animation in between point A and point B like so. So you can either use these to navigate to the next or the previous keyframe. You can either delete them using this icon or select them and hit this icon or backspace on your keyboard, whichever you're comfortable with. Now let's take a look at a realistic example. I will delete all of these and see why you would even need to add keyframes to your videos. Let's go to download where we downloaded some flower videos. 
and I will just let's say go on this and add it to my timeline and I just want this to my frame to go from here to here. You can either double click or select the video and hit this icon. You'll be directed to the same tab and over here I'm going to move in to until the part I want my video to be normal. Let's say around five seconds. You can see five seconds is written here. I will make a keyframe, add. From here to point A, nothing is happening. My video is stable. So if I wanted to move from here to here, I would first have to transform my video just as we learned in the previous lessons. Double click on your video, head over to video, basic. We're just gonna scale in our clip like so, and then change the X position. Like so, we may have to zoom in a little bit more so we don't get the corner. So this is the first screen that my audience will see. Because we didn't animate anything, this is stable throughout the whole video. But this is where the animation comes in handy because I can make multiple things happen at the same time. So from the beginning, I want it to be like this until let's say five seconds. Select this icon or double click on your video to access the animation tab. I'm going to add a keyframe. So from here to point A, this is my screen. I'm going to make a point B, hit add and select my keyframe or else I'm not adding anything, adding any effect to it that is. And over here, I just wanted to change position X from what it is now to, let's type in zero. And then at the same time, scale out my video. And now we will get something like this. This is point A, moving over here, point B. And then it will stay that way from point B onwards unless I make another keyframe. So this was a realistic instant. You want to have something like this. Again, the longer you make the space, the slower the transition will happen. Let's play this back. Really slowly, it's making its way to our point B. But if, it's, uh, if the space is short, it will happen really quickly. There we go. Happened quite fast. Let's go ahead and add this video of the Leopard, match it to media. You can look for the same video by typing in these tags. Got this one, got a nice little sun shining through and then, and then it goes away. Let's trim the end right here. And I'm just going to slow down this clip because it's a really nice scene, a really nice moment actually. And what we want to do is double click, go to speed as we learned, and this time go to speed ramping because at the beginning it's nothing special. Let's go back. But over here is where things get special. Let's add a keyframe. These are also called keyframes, by the way. And then from this point to this point, I want things slowed down. Let's bring down the speed, play this back. There we go, because we have a low FPS, it's a bit glitchy, but it will do. All right, so I have speed ramped this video. Let's go in the keyframe tab. I'm going to first transform my video and then go to animation. We're gonna keep it like this right until we see the sun, add a keyframe. So this is my point A. Then we're gonna see where the sun disappears, right here. And I'm just going to scale out and do the same thing for position. And it's going to slowly zoom out and we got this really nice scene. And then I will make a fade out animation. So just remove opacity. Now notice how there's no flash icons between these two. That's because when I created this uh, point, I was not selecting this keyframe. That means that I didn't want a animation between keyframe B and keyframe C. Instead, I made a new one that had its own animation. Now let's take a look at this. 
we got the speed ramping and at the same time it's zooming out and then it fades out. And once I'm finished, I can maybe go ahead and go to color where we learned how to color grade. This is a way to access things more quickly and we're good to go. So I can just completely edit my video and animate it using all the tabs that are available. And now you know how to animate your videos.